Hi everyone, it's Schematic Matt, and today we are going to talk about microscopic and microscopic structure of liver. As always, you can find pinned minutes under the video with main specific title that you are more interested in. The liver is the largest digestive gland, weighing on average of 1200 to 1800 grams. It lies under the diaphragm in the right upper abdomen and mid-abdomen and extends to the left upper abdomen. Anatomically, liver has four lobes. Right, left, caudate, and quadrate lobe. Right lobe is larger than left lobe. Liver has two surfaces. Diaphragmatic surface, the anterior superior, and visceral surface, the posterior inferior. Liver has two margins, anterior and posterior. Based on morphologic anatomy, the falciform ligament divides the liver into left and right lobes. Within the lower edge of the falciform ligament is the round ligament, ligamentum teres. Arrangement of the obliterated umbilical vein, ductus venosus, that travels from the umbilicus into the umbilical fissure, where it is in continuity with the ligamentum venosum. The ligamentum venosum lies within a fissure on the inferior surface of the liver between the caudate lobe posteriorly and the left lobe anteriorly. I have another video where I talk about posterior surface of the liver in detail. During fetal life, the ductus venosus is responsible for shunting a majority of blood flow of the umbilical vein directly into the inferior vena cava, transporting oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. After birth, the umbilical vein closes as the physiologic neonatal circulation begins. In the presence of portal hypertension, the umbilical vein may recanalize to a low portosystemic collateralization through the abdominal wall known as caput meduse. The wall surface of the liver, except for the bare area, is covered in a serous coat derived from the peritoneum, and this firmly adheres to the inner glissons capsule. The glissons capsule is a fine, dense, irregular, fibroelastic connective tissue layer extending from the fibrous capsule and covers the entire liver which binds and holds the lobules together. Liver anatomy divides the liver into eight functionally independent segments. Each segment has its own vascular inflow, outflow, and biliary drainage. The segments are left lateral, second and third, left medial, 4A, 4B, right medial, 8 and 5, right lateral segment, 7 and 6, and first segment is caudate process. Several ligaments connect liver with surrounding organs. The hepatogastric ligament or gastrohepatic ligament connects the liver to the lesser curvature of the stomach. The hepatodudinal ligament is a distal portion of the lesser omentum that connects the liver to the cranial part of duodenum. The hepatorenal ligament is the fold of pouch of peritoneum that extends from the low posterior surface of the liver to the anterior surface of the right kidney. Hepatic vasculature. The liver has a unique dual blood supply. Proper hepatic artery, 20%, supplies the non-parenchymal structure of the liver with arterial blood. It is derived from the celiac trunk. Hepatic portal vein, 80%, supplies the liver with partially deoxygenated blood carrying nutrients absorbed from the small intestine. This is the dominant blood supply to the liver parenchyma and allows the liver to perform its gut-related functions, such as detoxification. Venous drainage of the liver is achieved through hepatic veins. These hepatic veins open into the inferior vena cava. Nerve supply of the liver. The parenchyma of the liver is innervated by the hepatic plexus, which contains sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers. Sympathetic from celiac plexus and parasympathetic from vagus nerve. These fibers enter the liver at the porta hepatis and follow the course of branches of the hepatic artery and portal vein. Gleason's capsule, the fibrous covering of the liver, is innervated by branches 
of the low intercostal nerves. This tension of the capsule results in a sharp, well-localized pain. Now let's understand some terms and their meanings. The liver is divided grossly into four parts or lobes. The four lobes we already mentioned are the right lobe, the left lobe, the caudate lobe, and the quadrate lobe. Microscopically, each liver lobe is seen to be made up of hepatic globules. The hepatic globule, a polygonal histological unit of the liver, consisting of masses of liver cells arranged around a central vein. The lobules are roughly hexagonal and consist of plates of hepatocytes and sinusoids radiating from a central vein towards an imaginary perimeter of interlobular portal triads. A distinctive component of a lobule is the portal triad, which can be found running along each of the lobule's corner. The portal triad consists of the hepatic artery, the portal vein, and bile duct. Hepatocytes are the chief functional cells of the liver and perform numerous metabolic, endocrine, and secretory functions. The hepatic acinus. The hepatic acinus is the functional unit of the liver. Acinus has elliptical shape or diamond shape divided into zone 1, periportal zone, zone 2, transition zone or intermediate zone, and zone 3, pericentral or perivenular zone. Those hepatocytes closest to the arterial, zone 1, periportal zone, are the best oxygenated, while those farthest from the arterioles have the poorest supply of oxygen. This arrangement also means that cell in the center of the acinus, again zone 1 or periportal zone, are the first to see and potentially absorb blood-borne toxins absorbed into portal blood from the small intestine and are affected first by viral hepatitis. These zones differ by functions. Zone 1 hepatocytes, periportal zone, are specialized for oxidative liver functions such as gluconeogenesis, beta oxidation of fatty acids, and cholesterol synthesis. Zone 2 intermediate zone, zonal injury includes necrosis in yellow fever. And zone 3 cells, pericentral zone, are more important for glycolysis lipogenesis, and cytochrome P450-based drug detoxification. The detoxifying zone 3 cell have the highest concentration of CYP2E1. This zone is affected first by ischemia, is sensitive to metabolic toxins, and is site of alcoholic hepatitis. Portal lobes contains portions of three adjacent hepatic lobules and having a portal vein at its center and a central vein peripherally at each corner, has triangular shape. Main function is bile secretion. Sinusoids. Sinusoids are low-pressure vascular channels that receive blood from the terminal branches of the hepatic artery and portal vein. Sinusoids are lined with endothelial cells and flanked by plates of hepatocytes. Sinusoidal endothelial cells are highly fenestrated, which allows virtually unimpeded flow of plasma from sinusoidal blood into the space of DCA. Another important feature of hepatic sinusoids is that they house an important part of the phagocytic system. Sinusoids are populated by numerous Kupfer cells, a type of fixed macrophage. This space between sinusoidal endothelium and hepatocytes is called the space of DCA. The space contains plasma, connective tissue, collagen type 3, and hepatic cellid cells, ETO cells. Hepatocyte surfaces. The three relevant type of surfaces are sinusoidal, canalicular, and intercellular. These surfaces are involved in the exchange of substances between the hepatocytes, the vessels, and the biliary canaliculi. The basolateral surface, or sinusoidal surface, 
is separated from the sinusoids because of the parasinusoidal space. They represent 70% of the total hepatocyte surface. They are coated by microvilli, which emerge to the parasinusoidal space. These surfaces are the place where the exchange of substances between the hepatocytes and the sinusoids occurs. The canalicular surface or apical surface are the ones through which bile drains from the hepatocytes to the canaliculi. They represent 50% of the surface of the cell. The cytoplasm of the hepatocyte near canaliculi is rich in actin filaments and they are probably capable of modifying the canaliculi's diameter, thus influencing the flow. The inner cellular surfaces are the ones that are between two adjacent hepatocytes and they are not in contact with sinusoids or canaliculi. These are simple surfaces specialized in the cellular adherence and in the communication between hepatocytes through gap junctions. Liver cells The study of microscopic anatomy shows two major types of liver cells, parenchymal cells and non-parenchymal cells. About 70-85% of the liver volume is occupied by parenchymal hepatocytes. Non-parenchymal cells are sinusoidal endothelial cells. Liver sinusoidal endothelial cells, or LSEC, are highly specialized endothelial cells representing the interface between blood cells on the one side and hepatocytes and hepatic stellate cells on the other side. Liver sinusoidal endothelial cells represent a permeable barrier. Indeed, the association of fenestrae, absence of diaphragm, and the lack of basement membrane make them the most permeable endothelial cells. Indeed, they become capillarized and lose their protective properties, and they promote angiogenesis and vasoconstriction. These cells don't simply form a barrier within the hepatic sinusoids, but have vital physiological and immunological functions, including filtration, antigen presentation and leukocyte recruitment, cytokines and prostaglandin production. Kupfer cells also known as stellate macrophages, are specialized macrophages localized in liver within the lumen of the liver sinusoids and are adhesive to the endothelial cells which make up the blood vessel walls. Gut bacteria, bacterial endotoxins and microbial debris transported to the liver from the gastrointestinal tract via the portal vein will first come in contact with copper cells. They form part of the mononuclear phagocyte system. The primary function of the copper cell is to remove foreign debris and particles that have come from the portal system when passing through the liver. They are also useful in removing apoptotic cells from circulation. Kupfer cells can produce inflammatory cytokines, TNF alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha, oxygen radicals, and proteases, as well as performing phagocytosis. Creating these mediators is believed to lead to the development of liver injury. Apart from cleaning any bacteria, Red blood cells are also broken down by a phagocytic action, where the hemoglobin molecule is split. Hepatic stellate cells, also known as perisinusoidal cells or ETO cells, earlier lipocytes or fat storing cells, are parasites found in the perisinusoidal space of the liver, also known as the space of Dissé. Again, let's repeat a small area between the sinusoids and hepatocytes. The stellate cell is the major cell type involved in liver fibrosis, which is a formation of scar tissue in response to liver damage. In normal liver, stellate cells are described as being in a quiescent state. The lipid droplets in the cell body store vitamin A as a retinal ester. The function and role of quiescent hepatic stellate cells is unclear. When the liver is damaged, Stellate cells can change into an activated state and transform into myofibroblast. The activated stellate cell is characterized by proliferation, contractility, and chemotaxis.
This state of the stellate cell is the main source of extracellular matrix production in liver injury. The activated stellate cell is also responsible for secreting collagen scar tissue, which can lead to cirrhosis. PET cells. PET cells are liver associated natural killer NK cells. Large granular lymphocytes, they represent a morphologically and functionally modified form of a peripheral blood NK cells. They are localized inside the lumen of the sinusoid, closely adhering to the endothelial cells and cupfer cells, and often extending well-developed pseudopodia suggestive of migration along the sinusoidal wall. NK cells are functionally defined by their ability to kill certain tumor cells and virus-infected cells without prior sensitization. And in the end, let's talk a little about bile ducts and ductules. Bile ducts are present in portal tracts and are lined by cuboidal to columnar epithelium attached to a basement membrane. The smallest portal tract contains one or more bile ducts, usually accompanied by an artery and a vein. Ducules are located in the periphery of the tracts and transport bile from the canals of herrings to the duct. The portal bile ducts anastomose to form larger ducts that exit the hilum as right and left hepatic ducts. The ducts derive blood supply from a surrounding flexus supplied by the hepatic artery.